Hello, this is a quick tutorial on how to speed model in Houdini. I'm going to go pretty quick in this process, and at the end I'll try to go over all the nodes to kind of explain why I've done a few things. So I hope you could follow along, and thanks for watching. So I'm just going to start by putting in a geometry node in here, as we always start in Houdini. And inside here, I'll just start making some primitives. And to give context, I am going to be modeling this tower that's circled right here, and this is just you know, my second monitor as as reference. Uh, so by default, Houdini creates um, like a primitive type. I always just usually change it to polygon and increase my segments. Also by default, when you adjust the height of Houdini, it adjusts both axes on the Y. And if you don't want that to happen, you just have to copy th this value here and in the center, paste relative references divided by two. Now, uh, whenever you adjust the height, it will only go on one axis because in real time it's offsetting the, the location of the tube as you adjust that parameter. So I'm just going to start with this tube and just work on modeling it. And the purpose of, of uh, speed modeling Houdini is not to have the best procedural setup, but sometimes you just need to get a lot of detail done very quickly. And you still want to keep it as procedural as possible to just save you time as you're modifying as you're modeling, but we don't want to create uh, the most best procedural system possible because that'll just take too much time. And then, so I'm just using a merge node and just mixing a lot of different primitives for now. And if you click on the primitive you've created and click this icon here that says show handle, you'll get this really good gizmo that helps make things really fast in Houdini. Um, so you could use this and then holding control, you could snap rotate and, and you could just work with this very fast. And you could change the scale by selecting these gizmos here. If you just click and drag, it'll move one side. If you hold shift and click and drag on this arrow, it'll, it'll move both sides in a bit. And I'll just use that to scale this up. And without direct reference in my viewport to copy, like my my proportions and scales aren't quite right, but as I build it out, and if I keep it able to be modified, I can uh, adjust the, the scale till it looks correct. Um, just something like that. And then here I can just add uh, all the extrude. I prefer to work in grids and then extrude them instead of work in boxes. Depends on the situation, but a lot of the times um, this gives me a very easy customizable option. And I'll put back. Add a reverse here, and then I just slowly start building, building this up. And copy step because I'm going to want this on all four sides. And another trick on the copy step is if you copy the number of copies, and in rotate you could put 360 divided by, and then go paste relative references. So no matter how many copies I have, it will always copy on all, three, all 360 degrees. And then I'm going to add some more segments here. Just do, just do eight for now. And let's put an edit node inside here. And these edit nodes, you want to keep them as close to the top as possible. Because the, the, these are where your procedural system will break, it's whenever you have the edit nodes. So if you keep them as close to the top as possible, usually you're in a pretty good place. So I'm just going to move, move that in. And I don't want the extrude to be going downwards, so I'm going to adjust it instead of by distance. I'm going to just go extrude transform on the global axis and just extrude it in like this. And I'll play that some more later, but for now, this is just helping me block out what I want. And I'll just keep, keep on modifying. And this is the idea behind speed modeling. And it's a very important skill, I think, to learn. A lot of people overlook it in Houdini. And a lot of people would just use other applications for it, but I didn't like to have to import every single model in. And also I like to control this gives me um, to later make like a second tower that's similar, but I can modify it somewhere using just just copying things around and using what I want. 
I'm just going to keep modifying this until I'm very happy with it. And you can kind of see what, what's going on here, how I'm still modifying on the grid, but it's getting extruded and copied around. So I, in real time, I see the, the whole structure of it while I'm working on a very simplified piece of it. And, and I think that's really important when you speed model is to be able to see in real time what what you're doing and what it's looking at. So I'm gonna just keep modifying and just keep bouncing around and modifying all the values. Keep making it higher. It's actually supposed to be really high structure. It's uh, like too higher. And you could just uh, polycap that. Gonna add something on top. And again, I switch this to po uh, to polygon mesh. And another good note is a clip. Uh, this just lets you cut your model very quickly as well, like so. And also some transform nodes if you didn't. And another thing is uh, by default in Houdini, the transform nodes always go to zero, 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 uh, which makes it sometimes hard to move something that's up here. I saved that preset if you uh, to this area. You won't have it by default, but all it is is uh, in pivot translate uh, just these three values and that helps uh, center the pivot to the object center. Um, so if you do that on your transform nodes and save the preset, then you could quickly just modify it and then go back to it. Just scale it up a bit. And another Another tool I really like in Houdini uh, that I haven't liked in other applications is the Boolean tool. Because you could use it procedurally without making your model hard to modify. So I'm actually going to Boolean into this area up here. It's just disappearing right now because we don't have any input for it, but I'm going to create that now. Circle. And make it a polygon as well. And I'll, I'll use these blast nodes and then you could just select uh, the points here. And then I'll just delete the, 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 the points uh, or objects you have selected. And get another effect mode here. And that's not entirely procedural, but again, uh, you don't want to spend too much time making everything 100% procedural, uh, unless that is the purpose of what you're doing. But in this case, it's not. And I don't want to spend a huge amount of time on that. And let's screw that out. And it's easy for your nodes to get messy. If you hold A and scroll, like move your mouse downward, it, it kind of sorts them uh, with the appropriate spacing. So I use that a lot to just like quickly sort things out. So I'm gonna again transform it through the front and on the global axis, and we're just gonna extrude that out. Just add a polycap to cap these faces. And if it's doing something weird, it's probably because I didn't have fused vertices. I had a fuse. And this just gives me this basic shape that's used a lot on this project. So I'm going to use that to Boolean. And I can just do a transform node with a center pivot. And, and this is why I love Booleans in Houdini. They're very interactive and non destructive. And I could change the Boolean to a surface because I didn't want any more solids. I'm just going to move this up to where I want to be in it. So, and 
I'll modify that later. I could go back to this edit node and make this a little longer and then a little bit smaller. So, and I could add a merge node onto this boolean and then add some more transform transform to add uh, more details as I continue to boolean pieces out of this model. And again, what's powerful about this is I could still go back and edit my sh the shape of my actual tower support piece without breaking my booleans. And, and again, that's why I do really like booleans in Houdini. Um, they're some of the, the best I've ever worked with. And I transform node and then do that. And if your edges are starting to, if you're getting too much detail in one area and too little in another area, to help Boolean, you can also put a divide node after your edit and then change that to breaker polygons. And it just, just helps kind of add some. Some polygons to uh, to make the cuts a little little cleaner. And now we'll just connect it back to extrude, and it works. And our copy and everything is getting copied around. And that, that's exactly the type of workflow we want to use. And what's good is uh, after all this, we've got a poly bevel. And then uh, and just change it to ignore flat edges because we don't want the bevel everywhere. And then you could add a little bevel like that. And again, your, your, your smoothing groups aren't going to be good, um, but but uh, we're going to fix that by adding a normal modifier and just lower the normals. So here it's just my geometry got a little screwed up just because this I wasn't careful with this divide and it, it adds edges too close to other ones sometimes, so it's something to keep in mind of. So I was able to fix it like that. And it's not gonna get you a, like the most highest detail mesh possible, but the benefit for this is you could get a lot of detail very quickly. And that's the whole purpose of this and, and why I need it on my personal project. Um, just because to make all these details um, with a perfect geometry, I'll just take a really long time, so I'm not really too concerned about that. And I'll go back to this tab, we add an edit node, and then there's some more modifications here. I'm just going to scale the bottom part of this tower out of it. And again, what's, what's good is it's quite customizable. If you're not really sure like how it's going to look, you could, you could really spend your time with it. And now I want to I wanna extrude some pieces out of here. So actually, I'm just going to do that by adding an extra edge. These, actually, these tools up here in polymodeling are very helpful as well. So you can just add an edge loop and add one here. And you can see it. I'll add a new node here, which means I need to add another edit node underneath it. And if you plan out well ahead of time, it doesn't get this messy, but it's, it's not a mess I should be concerned with. I don't think it's going to cause too many problems. And as long as you're able to keep control of the, of the situation, it's going to be fine. deciding what I want to do still, but and one good thing is it doesn't select things outside of the node. Depends if you like that or not, it's going to be up to you, but for me, I think it usually works pretty well. Because it just lets you focus on one part of the model. It's going to need that. Okay, like that. And yeah, just lets you slowly craft it and just keep going. 
that similar to the, the little box tennis merge node. And again, these, using these gizmos are very quick. And that's why I like using them. Add this detail right here. So I'm going to use this box to cut it out of the tube. And ideally, you don't want to put too many edit nodes after your boolean because then you are kind of stuck with that. Um, that area where you're not able to modify. Alright, so I, yes, I cut this out and I'm using the same box as oops, what happened here? And yeah, one thing about Houdini you have to be careful is just crossing those lines. It tends to do that. So what's good about this is now I have this box split two ways. One it's cutting out of the cylinder and one it's a new line because I'm gonna use it as an object. So I can modify this box and it'll affect both the boolean and uh, the object I plan to use it for. And that's kind of where Houdini helps you a lot, is you could use one node for multiple things and it's going to save you a lot of time there. So I'm just going to add another boolean onto this box because I want to cut out one of these from there. This is my arc model. And I want to cut that up from this box down here. So I'm just going to bring that over with transform node. And again, these gizmos are very quick and helpful in Houdini. And again, the power of nodes is I'm able to use this one object on this boolean out of this object as well as out of this one. Some planning could really help with that and also um, could really save you a lot of time. So, And the reason I boolean it out of this tube as well is so when I see the tube, I kind of could see a hole for that. But I don't need it to be that intense. I just want it a little bit. Like so. Hopefully that will be good. Maybe it's a little too big still. Scale that down a bit. And it's still very customizable, and this is why I really enjoy the style of modeling. So I'm going to just push this in. This bit was a little too dominant. So let's scale that in. And now let's say I want kind of like a, a stone outline around this, this cut. So I could use the same transform node. But come here into my line before I extruded it and bring that over to here. Just like that. And I want to merge that into here. And now I could just use this geometry and I could poly extrude this one out. That. Copy the poly extrude and now it's extruded on the other axis. You can see there's a gap here, so because I missed, yeah, I still need that fuse here. I'm just going to put that on there, on, onto our spline. And then output back as well. And now if I check my merge, I have this outline, and again, it's very quick. I'm using the same shapes that I used to do the cuts that I am using to make the, the extrusions with. That's how, that's how we go, and I'm going to keep on working with this model, but uh, that's what I plan to do for uh, all these details on this pro personal project I'm working on, uh, because my focus isn't on the bottom areas, uh, it's more on the top, and I might do a procedural system to make these little homes here, and if, you train, uh, if I do that, I'll, come, I'll create another tutorial video on that. So just to quickly recap what my nodes are looking at. And this may look complicated, but once you get used to Houdini, it's it's not that bad. It's easy to read and understand it. And this is where I would just organize it a little more. Yeah, so essentially, 
Um, this is my arc that I used for multiple places in my model. Uh, transform nodes are just a way to copy it along. It's, it's more of an instance because if we modify something up here, um, it'll affect all, all of these uh, down here. I'm using booleans to cut some holes, but not putting edit nodes after the booleans. I may need to later, but if you did do that, you'd want it to be the very last step. Use copy stamps a lot. Um, that's your way just to save a lot of time. Um, and you don't want to break that as much as possible as well. Again, likely not have edit nodes after it unless you really need to. And the centerpiece is just tubes with uh, me adding some more edge loops. And that's also taking a Boolean and then just adding objects onto it. Uh, with the very end doing a poly bevel and fixing this moving groups with a normal modifier. And that's just my approach to speed modeling and a very useful tool to have in your build. So I hope, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and have a good day.